Um, talk to me about the cost structure of the product. As far as what is it cost? Yeah. Oh yeah. So what's it's going to cost? The market anything? price is about twelve hundred dollars for a premium product. No way for that thing. Cost for for a set. Okay. Autoscope. Twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. And I just bought one through my uh, medical education line to get the full experience. Basically, I went down to the bookstore, and Welch Allen was really the only device that was sold huh. in the bookstore. They own ninety percent of the market share. So that's the price. What's what's that thing cost? To make? Mm -hmm. Probably about 150 bucks. Was, do you know, have you gotten far enough along on your product to know Not what yet. your landed cost would be like? Bridge Design is working on that for us right now. Okay. We've sort of pushed all of the engineering, design, manufacturing uh, responsibilities onto them mm -hmm. because they've sort of taken an equity stake in our company. Mm -hmm. No, that's promising. It's fantastic. It's At impressive. a very early stage. I mean, this is, we had no, other than a concept, they decided to take us on as one of their um, partners. Yeah. Uh, and what what do you think? So, what do you, what do you think your target price is going to be? It's going to be a premium price. We're not going to so sell twelve hundred, right? At least twelve hundred. So, we're not coming to the market to sell a cheap product. Anybody can come up with another Chinese-made, sorry, uh, product that's two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. What we want is a product that supersedes whatever's already out there in the market. It's going to have way more functionality. It's not just a, a battery, a lens, and a power source. This is going to have wireless no, transmission. Yeah, no, I get that. I get the product. The presentation was very clear about what the product right. was. So and I'm a product development guy. Perfect. Uh, background. Perfect. So, so that's why I'm, I'm what I'm worried yeah. about. And uh, if you look at the medical, school, you know, our sort of entry market is the medical school, and <coughs> we spent. I have two hundred sixty thousand dollars in loans. I didn't even flinch when I spent twelve hundred bucks on that with mm -hmm. I'll pay an extra three hundred bucks or four hundred bucks. It's just tagged on my school loans. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to go cheap there. And definitely, when we get to the hospital. We're going to be a value for them because by 2015, every single hospital has to have an electronic medical record system in place, mm -hmm. and we're going to seamlessly jump right into that market. Because you the wireless functionality yep. um, and Qualcomm in the back. Yep. Uh, what about the distribution? How do you how do you get distribution? How do you get your product in front of the customer? Sales distribution. Yeah. Okay. So if we talk about the the medical school environment as mm -hmm. our first market, it'll be myself and Kai and a team of other medical students that we have a network with. And we'll basically hit every medical school in the United States. There's only 120 of them. It's not hard to get out there and have a web page and allow them to buy directly from us versus the Welch Allen device, which is sort of what we look at. You have to go through a third party to buy their product. Mm -hmm. You will buy directly from us, mm -hmm. which, again, will save cost and allow them to um, have a more efficient uh, sales channel. Is there any regulatory hurdles that you have to get over? There is. So the Otoscope is a class one device, which is easy. It's like a Q-tip in the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. the, um, a thalmoscope is a class two, but we can use an F510 uh, K submission to go under Welch Allen's existing ophthalmoscope because it's going to have the same basic oh, okay. guts. It's basically harnessing a pre existing product's uh, FDA approval okay. to guide that product under their uh, coexisting license. It's is, already out there. Is there a way to gauge the risk that's associated with that? There's essentially no risk with a 510K. We're not developing a, a new product that has uh, more invasive features or other sort of guts that are different than what's already out there. It's the still a 12 lens. ounces approved, the 16 ounces approved. Exactly. Is still water. Exactly. Zero risk, you're saying. Zero risk. Okay. Um, and the one of the things that concerned me, and we didn't really get to it in the presentation, but the market seems pretty small. And the difference between being a company and a product. Exactly. Right. So, so you mentioned platform, exactly. um, which which is encouraging, but still the, the numbers seemed Pretty small right. market. And, is and that North America? Was that U.S.? That's was just that? the U.S. And we're only talking about the otoscope of the ophthalmoscope. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get to uh, really touch on it, but we have a platform that we've gone after on over 26 medical devices that we have a provisional patent on. Mm -hmm. and we're hoping to take the same technology, wireless, no battery, put it into these other devices and build on the company for, that starts off as an otoscope and ophthalmoscope. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I went after this product first is because it's the one that's the most universal and people have to buy it. Mm -hmm. and we really have a choice in medical school. So we thought that's the easiest to go after. Mm -hmm. And then from there, once we have an established base and we have a reputation, we've proven ourselves in the market, from there we can launch other products if we haven't already exited it by that point. Mm -hmm. And Walch Allen hasn't come knocking on our door and said we want to sort of take They're over the only product. other dog in town? Or they own 90% of the market. There are most of the dog, and then there's a few puppies. You know, um, <laughs> you know and we, we want to be the shark that, that goes right for it. You know, and, and the thing is, is that certainly the market seems small, I think, up front, um, because we, we want an early penetration. 
with a, a group of people that we know are going to be early adopters, mm -hmm. kind of like the Apple products, you know. Mm -hmm. So medical students, uh, nursing students are what we're going after first. But there's an emerging home-based market now with uh, the Affordable Care Act now. Hospitals are starting to realize that readmissions are, are a huge problem for them. So they're starting to spread out more into a home-based market. You know, I'm a, I'm a home-based physician, I'm a hospice care physician as well, and I practice out there. And, and there's a huge move back to the home now. And if you're back in the home, you need technologies that work. It is embarrassing when you go in and you look at a patient's ear and that technology doesn't work and you have to break a flashlight open and, and, and shove that on there, you know. But of course, our, our core technology goes beyond that, you know. We're looking at not only technologies that can be used with some physicians that are in the crowd now, but also some people who are, who are you know, not physicians, people who use glucometers, uh, you know, people who are going to check their blood levels with their, for their coumadin levels. These are devices that are going to be able to report back to their doctors, not only to the electronic medical record for the physician, but the electronic health record for the patients, which, are two, which is a dichotomy, you know. So, so certainly we, we want to be able to utilize these devices for those purposes as well. And, you know, we're also looking at veterinary and dental as well as, as where this platform can be used and not just the otolithoscope. I've never sat in front of a patient acting like a doctor. <laughs> um, but is there any pause when somebody's going to give you a checkup and they go, hold on a second, let me just crank up my, my yeah. machine here? Yeah. First of all, I mean, is that, it seems yeah. very, very so, low tech and like, now I'm in yeah. Fiji getting field yeah. tested. What, right. Is, so there is definitely some I don't know you're a doctor. <laughs> Doctors you know, can afford batteries. Well, you know, the, the, the capacitor The capacitor actually holds power for a long time. That's why they tell you that. So you can do it in private? Well, well no. You, it, 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 it holds a charge. And we actually are going to be producing wall units that have a capacitor there. So actually, it's always, it's always charged. But it doesn't always need to be charged. It charges up to a certain point, stops. Yeah. You know, unlike a battery, you could keep charging it. You can actually ruin the battery and overcharge it as well. So we're actually using capacitor technology uh, to store our power, and it gives you a good pulse for at least 20, 30 seconds or more. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at a patient's ear for more than 30 seconds, you're asleep in their ear. You know, <laughs> so, so you know, I, you know, and, and and you know, right now we currently have one strings. I mean, I've choked patients. I've actually slapped them with the with the string. So and and you know, I, I got to tell you, it's it's actually. You know, using some of these devices now that are not ergonomic, there's not a good user interface. And the other huge thing we're forgetting here, there's a lot of female physicians in the audience too that are here supporting us. There's no, it's not designed for females. The mm -hmm. female physicians are a huge force right now. And most of the devices, again, surrounded around the battery and men created them, you mm -hmm. know. And there are women, there are women physicians. My class of 100 had 70 women, 30 men. And that was back in 19... That was back in 2002. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, we, we are taking a lot of things here, not only redeveloping it, making it better, but making it make sense for the physician and also for the patient interface. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I guess my, my question wasn't that the doc, I get the idea that the doctors like it, but, but have you gotten any feedback from patients that they don't mind it? They, they mind the crank? No, because we haven't actually tested that point. So but I can tell you from a satisfaction standpoint, if you're talking about a patient, you look in their ears or their eyes, say, oh yeah, you have a damaged vessel in your eye. Mm -hmm. There's really no sort of feedback to them. Now we can take that information. Show them a picture. Throw yeah. a picture and say, this is what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And not only that, with the San Diego blackout, you know, I got to tell you, um, Bellevue Hospital during Sandy shut down. Bellevue mm -hmm. was one of the oldest residency and oldest hospitals. They shut down. So, you know, I would presume that if a patient with a hospital shutting down and a doctor comes in with a set of tools that works when there's no electricity, mm -hmm. That to me is satisfaction. Mm -hmm. That to me is anywhere you are, whether it be a hurricane, whether you out, be out in a, in a rural island and the tools work and it makes sense, that to me is satisfaction. And, and again, I, I'm biased because I'm, I'm on the examining side. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> well, you want a doctor with tools. Um, price point? The, well, the price, the price point, the, the manufacturing of it is, 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 is going to be, and then even. I mean, the things that you showed me are out there doesn't look like they can break. Yours might break. Right. In my business, we make products. We sell it to people. Right. Reverse logistics of it is a huge part of it. My concern, my only concern would, on this would be to really understand the cost structure, to understand the, the customer service aspect of, of, of the re reverse logistics and getting it and, and distribution is harder than Absolutely.
And, and I've been fortunate to, to have been involved with a company that um, was starting off in an industry where they didn't have the power of employees, but they slowly started to retain them from other companies. That if we get to the point where we really want to launch this ourselves, we would approach the World Challenge, the sales team of the World Challenge. And as we were getting up, what's the, what are the, what's the deal term again? What are you looking to? Them? The deal for what? The, the deal, what's the, what's the oh, deal? Oh, $25,000 to get us to the next prototype. Prototype. Yeah. That's right. all you're really going to do is find that. At this that, point, and yeah. And then, then there's a future deal in it. Exactly. Okay. Great. And yeah, we're all, we're all sort of employed by ourselves. We're not using the money for salary or other sort of expenses. We've taken us Well, this when's, far, the, when's the spark happen? Will you guys all jump on board at a certain point? Quit your day jobs, and then this is it? Yeah. If, if That's we, the idea? The idea, yeah, exactly. If by the time do you need all four out, of you plus the other people I saw on the slide, or do you need a portion of you? Portion a portion of us, okay, for full time. So who's who's going to go? We're going to go. Well, you know, we're, 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 we're going to be flexible. Here. I, 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 I always, you know, the way I look at it is, I don't want to be an Eduardo Salon. You know, when everyone's in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. So, so that that's my thing. If, if, if it's time to spark, we're gonna we're gonna burn. Okay. In the good way. Right. <laughs>